played in his first inning back, and did you kind of get the all clear after with, with his shoulder from him? Yeah, I, I've had that for a while. Um, he's been uh, reluctantly patient, if that's the right phrase. I mean, he shaved his head. He's told everyone that he's ready to pitch and all these things. We're, we're just right. We wanted to get to the point where we felt comfortable as a, a coaching staff that he was overly prepared. And then now that he's thrown, there's no, all right, now we got to give him another week or we got to do this or that with him. And, and that's the position we got into. As far as his outing, what I told the other coaches and, and Russell, I thought he was outstanding. His, his first two pitches sucked. Uh, no, no disrespect to Ketterman. Um, missed his both spots by big time, and Ketterman put a good swing on it. And then after that, I thought he was great. We, we made a defensive mistake behind him. Uh, their best hitter, without a doubt, and a guy who can hit anybody in the, in the country, and no disrespect to the other hitters, that's just my opinion, is Prater. And it was a good two-strike pitch. The guy just got him. I mean, I think he's a special hitter mentally and physically if you really key into what he's doing and the numbers back it up. And then after that, Blade rolled. But it felt good after him. But it felt good after him. Yeah, and I think at first he came out, and of course he wants a zero and wants to dominate the world. But, you know, why would you want that to be your first outing? Uh, more than anything, it's key to just get out there. And now, like I said, he's in the mix. And that's why the guys were hooting and hollering in, in the outfield. And they know how hard he's worked, too. If you look at his body, um, he's more physical than he was. The guy's been working like a maniac. He's kind of been Ben Joyce 2.0. And by that, I mean just his routines and his work ethic have been phenomenal. And so I think he's built himself up where he's not only healthy, but he's actually kind of come back at least with a stronger and more dur durable body. In the short term, do you know how you're going to use him moving forward? Uh, you know, no special role, no this or that type of situation. Just he's one of the better arms we have in the bullpen. And, you know, he's now thrown one inning. So the next time could be one plus. Um, and then the time or time or two after that, we'll see how it goes. It could be two or three. And then, um, you know, once he's built up his pitch count, now he might be a guy that takes the ball from a guy and finishes it if it's the middle of the game or eventually will put himself in a conversation where he's a potential starter for us. You seemed close to going to him on Sunday. What about him gave you the confidence on a moment like that to make a debut? Yeah, the, the thing that messed it up was Elko was the guy. Um, I have a lot of respect for him as a person and a hitter, and we thought that was a really good matchup. So if we were going to throw him into the middle of a, a game-deciding situation in an SEC game, which is what he wanted, and physically he was ready for it, um, it was going to be to just come get Elko and, and maybe another hitter. And if you remember in the eighth, it kind of sped up on us and we got to Elko in a hurry. So Redmond ended up being the guy that faced him. So his role that you're referring to was basically if anything happened after Redmond, extra innings, whatever it might be, he was going to be a, a, an option that we'd use, the, the next option. Is it fair to say he's going to have to uh, earn his way into starting again on weekends? Um, I think it's just going to have to make sense, whatever the particular time is. Um, you know, if that I, I know what you're getting at, and if that ever becomes an issue, it'll be a good problem, and we'll get to it. But I, I think we're weeks away from being in any kind of crazy situation where we're not sure what to do with with good arms. Uh, I think for now, each guy just needs to keep improving under the the wise tutelage of of Coach Anderson. He's yeah. Go ahead. Do you have any updates on uh, Jared Dinkins? Yeah, he was walking around better today. Um, he, he's you know no longer in a boot. And on crutches, uh, he's under his own, you know, power or you know, putting weight on that foot. But he, he's a day or two away from probably doing any active movements, um, so making progress. But I don't know where the light is at the end of the tunnel because it's it's kind of a pain tolerance and it's a, a, a bone bruise, so it's kind of hard to to read. Plus, that's not really my specialty. Every time you, it feels like every time you put Christian in the lineup, he he comes through. I mean, is this what you expected out of him? Well, yeah, I mean, I, I think you know what you're going to get out of him. Is he, he's kind of a game day performer. The, the guys compared him to Andre Lipsius a lot. And what they mean by that is there's a few things uh, that are similar in the way they do stuff. But um, I don't like the phrase gamer in this case, but just when, when the lights are a little brighter, I think he likes it. And, and I think he also is a smart player on top of being a great athlete. And, um, you know, to be compared to that guy, is our best player for a couple of years. Um, Coach, so. since you've uh, come, um, there's been a lot of first time ever, sort of first in a very long time. Um, has there been a little bit of that extra juice since you guys got the first uh, number one in program history? Uh, I don't know, because I think that was last weekend. I don't know which ones have the gold star and which, which ones don't. Um, 
but I thought that was last week. What, what I noticed tonight was there was a little extra juice, and we kind of did a Wednesday uh, because of their situation. They went and saw the Kivet Cougars last weekend, and then I think they're leaving here and going to the next weekend's road trip. So we did Wednesday instead of Tuesday. I'm not so sure that didn't help us. So, you know, we chartered back from Oxford, but get your feet under you, get a day of preparation going into this game. And whatever they had in them, again, maybe it was Euros was in the stand, so they were scared of him starting a fight with one of them or something. But uh, pregame in and out was really good. The focus was good. Jarrell and Russell are not in the lineup, which, trust me, they want to be. And they probably had more juice going during, you know, batting practice and pregame, more energy than anybody. Um, so whatever it was, uh, I, I thought they were really focused today, which is what's going to be needed against these guys. Maybe it's say no, this is always a dog fight against these guys, but it was it was there. Coach, you know, Mr. Christian, he and Blake Burke have done so well to play. How can they continue to improve as the season goes on? I think stacking reps is key. Um, so again, you get to a point uh, today where you're you're deciding who's going to be in the lineup. Those those guys need repetitions, and they need to be in you know different scenarios. Uh, but but I think just being mature about tough situations. It's kind of like the ninth inning uh, in Oxford. I thought our team had a good amount of maturity. I know we didn't make one play, but Coach A's been there as long as anyone, and he's saying it, and I kind of back it up. The guys were intense, but they were kind of under control, um, whereas you, you can kind of freak out in those situations when you have a massive crowd going nuts. And um, So I think situations like that, it'll be good for those guys to pay attention to those older guys and see how they handle them. But, you know, those guys are really good players. So I think they just need to use their talents the way they have them. I mean, Blake Burke, if he doesn't rush his swing, it looks like Will Clark. When he rushes his swing sometimes, you know, he, he you know, I'm not, whatever. The umpire was good tonight. He was disputing a call, so, um, but Blake was running at the ball. So it's kind of hard, you know, me and the coaches were joking. It's hard to see the ball well if you're running at it. So when those guys are under control and using their talent, it's pretty good. A few more guys talk about the crowd. 4,600 on a weekday game for the second week in a row, a big crowd on a weekday place. Just how awesome is that? Yeah, well, I was on deck. I was getting – I got – the the text message theme I got more than anyone was the crowd looks phenomenal on TV and uh, looked better in person. I mean, we stare right at the, the porches. So when you see those things filled with people, it's just awesome. And then I thought tonight, too, people were more into the game than maybe they were on the last Tuesday. And probably an answer to that is those students are around. It helps to have a little youth. So – um, we're, we're glad they're back in school, and we're probably going to talk about an SEC weekend, you know, coming up. We've only got two SEC weekends left where school is in session. Now, I hope they come back when school's not in session, um, but hopefully we got that energy and, and juice. No disrespect to any elderly folk, um, but uh, I think they made a difference tonight. Go ahead. Well, then lots of solidify the program the last few years, but having beaten Vanderbilt in a series, how much extra juice is there to kind of get that monkey off the back and be the gold standard in the state? Uh, I think we're in a position where um, we're trying to win as many SEC games as possible. So as far as that particular matchup, I just know last year on Sunday, the last time we've played that team, we did not play very well at all. Um, and then the last game we played in that stadium on Sunday, we actually played very well. Um, you know, Alaric helps throw a guy out at the plate. Um, so, and then the perspective I have, because I was answering some of John's questions, is it's very similar to last weekend, in, in my opinion. I mean, I, I, I challenge Vol fans to look at Ole Miss's old stadium, uh, Mississippi Stadium in, in Oxford. The shell is very similar to ours here, and they've built that thing into a monster. So I don't know how many people were there this weekend, uh, but the first pitch was talked about, the sellout was talked about, both teams kind of having some rankings was talked about. So. I think similar, um, you know, talk or juice going into this weekend. So hopefully the experience last weekend helps this weekend. The pitching situation coming up this weekend, do you have any idea who's going to step up and fill that role? No, I mean, and Seth is capable of playing the outfield. Christian Scott didn't make an appearance tonight because he had a stomach bug. Um, so he's certainly a candidate. We've put Chris Moore out in left field. Um, so I, I want Jared back in the lineup as soon as possible. But selfishly as a coach, I don't want anyone to slash my tires or anything. So I like when we can get guys reps. That's a backwards way of saying it because you're you're missing one of your favorite guys to see run around the park. But you know you know what I mean. It'll give other guys an opportunity. Dan, get the last one. Or What'd you have? Sorry, uh, we, we we cut no, you off. Um, uh, Tim Corbin and you. Uh, what's your relationship with him like uh, respectfully? You know, 
Yeah, kind of the same as, as Coach B. I mean, you, you want to go to a place where you leave a little bit of legacy. And I mean, I don't, you know, I'm just kind of worried about getting up tomorrow on time and, and taking care of myself. And then I can move on to help and take care of the players. So I got my hands full with that. But what you admire are, again, I'll compare to last weekend, what I was getting at is like Gene Stevenson at Wichita State, Coach B has built something that did not exist before he got there. And then um, you could say the same thing about Coach Corbin. And I had a good fortune of working around Coach Van Horn. They're, that stadium now is absolutely absurd compared to what it was. They don't do that unless they believe in the way the program's being run and the amount of games that are, that are being won too. So um, I'd like to think that I get along with everybody uh, in the league equally. I know a couple of the other guys better um, than I know him, but anytime we've interacted, he's been uh, nothing but kind to me, and I'd be crazy to not have respect to him or any of the guys that have accomplished a ton of stuff in our league. Last year it was all, the, all about Ladder and Rocker going into the series, the, the conversation. This year it'll be Dolan, or Burn, Dean. How much confidence do you have going into this series, any series with, with those three guys on the mound? Well, I think it's nice, and it's kind of the easy way out, but I'm just being honest. It's, it's just nice to know who your guys are. Um, you know, a lot of times you're going into a weekend with a TBA or um, you're not sure if a guy can get you five innings, he's just got the start. Um, so you don't know how any of those outings are going to go. Um, everybody, you know, will have a best outing, uh, not their best outing and stuff in between. But it's just nice to know who your guys are and that their teammates believe in them and they like playing behind them. Um, and that's certainly the case right out of the gate, Chase Burns. We, we miss Mr. Dallas, but it's kind of the same thing. When you start the series, you want a guy who can, you know, at least go into the fifth, give you a chance to win, maybe is capable of, of, you know, having an inning where he puts it on another team and all that good stuff. But what I really like is when it's a, a guy that the team likes playing behind. And uh, we, we're fortunate enough to have that again this year. Thanks, Tony.